Hello, and today we're going to look at how 1950s underwear and shapewear was an absolutely vital part of creating the 1950s hourglass silhouette that we all love to see in the marvellous Mrs Maisel. So Mitch Maisel herself does refer to her underwear in several of the episodes when she is doing her stand-up routine and she says it's the bras, it's the girdles, it's the corsets. They cut off the circulation to our brains. And then men tell us things and we just believe them. It gives you clue as to how comfortable or not <laughs> the 1950s shapewear can be. So in my previous Mrs Maisel videos I've looked at both how the dress patterns created the hourglass shape, how your petticoat created that fullness in the skirt that enhanced the hourglass shape. The, the key part of the hourglass shape that was so admired at the time in stars like Marilyn Monroe and Sophia Loren. Obviously these women had <laughs> amazing figures naturally but if you didn't you could create the illusion of an hourglass figure with your underpinnings your shapewear before i get into 1950s underwear and foundation garments i will just show you what i'm wearing today now you will see more of this dress later on because some dresses enhanced the silhouette created by the foundation garments with additional buckram shaping which we'll be showing you the buckram shaping later of this dress but i'll just stand up it's a there we are got that to show you that very classically 1950s really painterly fabric print and of course the wide scoop neck and the shaped skirt and I'm wearing a <laughs> rather unusual and really fun I think 1950s half hat so I'll bend down to show you and you can see it's shaped it's like that and it's and you'll see more of this hat later on and it's made up of black leaves and little black glass beads formed into blackberries so what i'm going to be showing you today is my collection of 1950s underwear so the 1940s had a very natural bust line rounded bust line in <laughs> kind of natural place whereas the 50s things were pushed up and there was the pointy look and much of the time they used what they called full C's and I was actually fairly unaware of this I just believed that the figures were like this but thanks to Janine Spenlove's latest video on Mrs Maisel I found out that they did have little inserts into the conical points of their bras, which does make sense, which they called full C's, which could be conical ones. You can buy just little conical ones at what Katie did, a UK based retro lingerie shop in the 1950s quite interestingly <laughs> they had adverts like this where you could see that you could have the kind of one with the nipple and the one without so you could make it really look quite natural you had your bullet bras you had your corsets or corselets these could be made up of two layers they held you in like right from the diaphragm down over to compress your lower tummy and hold everything in and they did gradually become more if comfortable is the right word less uncomfortable because younger women would actually complain that when they walked the lower part of the corselet would dig, <laughs> dig in the lower thigh so the height of the leg was raised so as you go through the 50s and into the early 60s the leg height is a bit higher and I actually have a girdle from the early 60s which I'm going to show you which has that fairly highish leg but to create your 1950s shape the most effective and extremely popular item of underwear was the waist cincher or the waspy 
which look like this and the ones that you can buy today from companies like what Katie did are very similar. The waspy takes inches off your waist and it makes you look really but if you haven't tried one and you think oh that sounds good a word of warning <laughs> whereas girdles and corselets are this is just according to me are on the bearable spectrum i personally found the waist cincher utter agony so it's fine at first, you put it on, you look great, you think, oh, I can cope with this. But I made the mistake of wearing mine out for the day and I wore it out to a vintage fair where it turned out there was absolutely nowhere that I could privately take, <laughs> take it off. I was trapped in it. And as the day wore on, it became like a medieval torture, like boa constrictor kind of, it was agony. And as soon as I got home, I kind of rushed to sort of like unhook it. And I had like deep red welts in my stomach for quite a while afterwards. Am I putting you off? <laughs> but they were very popular in the 50s and maybe I'm a wimp. But I did check with the vintage community how they find wearing a waist cinch just so you don't just get my personal. <laughs> and it was interesting. So a number of people said, kind of same as me, they thought it was fine at the beginning and then quite soon on in the evening, they just had to go to the ladies and take them off because they couldn't bear it anymore. Or people that say, I, I mean, I did get it all wrong, that I got it all wrong and that I should have trained myself up to wearing them, that you don't just not wear them at all and then wear them for 10 hours straight. <laughs> you should actually increase your tolerance. And also, I guess what I should mention is, of course, women's figures have changed. The women now do have straighter figures than they used to do a few decades ago women's figures have actually become straight now i don't know why this is but i can tell you that my mother has a theory <laughs> which is most adamant is the correct one which is that in the 50s women always wore belts what she believes is because women always wear belts, waist just didn't expand. They were kind of always held in. She hasn't had a team of scientists to research this and back her up, but I thought I'd share that theory with you. But on the subject of these very wide scoop necks, often they would actually have like a ribbon and a popper. So you would feed your bra strap through and then pop it. So your bra strap sat further out on your shoulders. And of course, the wide scoop neck and the tiny waist and the full skirt with your stiffened petticoat or even your shaped butt crimp underneath really created that hourglass silhouette that we see Mrs. Maisel wearing. So I have a few original pieces of 1950s underwear plus a couple of pieces of retro 50s underwear that you can buy today. And to show you what that underwear looks like, tell you how comfortable or not it is, and do you the effect of dresses that have, I have two that are shaped, they can stand up on their own virtually, and that, that's not an exaggeration. They literally hold their shape on their own. You have this rather gorgeous Disney princess shape. And then what I thought would be really interesting, given all the publicity over the walkaway dress and the talk about how it didn't fit properly, I thought what we would do as an experiment, and I don't know how this is going to go, to show the walkaway dress with modern underwear and then see what does it look like if I wear the whole shebang of vintage underwear, the girdles, the waist cinches, the bullet bra, the slip, the, the petticoat. So everything that a woman of the 1950s, like Mrs. Maisel, would actually be wearing under the walkaway dress. And 
I don't think that's been done. I think everyone wore modern underwear, I'm including myself. Uh, so I have no idea what difference it will make, but so it will make a difference and it will just be interesting to see i hope you agree so after i've shown you all my underwear we'll have a look at that walk away dress wearing true vintage 1950s underpinnings beneath it so i hope you will join me and we'll see what happens and yes i'm putting a waist cincture on again just for you <laughs> Before I show you my vintage and vintage inspired shapewear, I just wanted to show you the two dresses I mentioned earlier that can virtually stand up on their own. There's this gorgeous cherry red velvet 50s dress from my mother. And you can see that it's stiffened beneath with this layer of buckram. It's a very stiff mesh-like fabric that just holds the skirt out. And I just wanted to point out this ribbon because it's such a simple idea. There's nothing in the construction of the skirt that creates those huge scallops. It's just a ribbon decoration with a ribbon folded over on itself and then i just wanted to show you the bust area which also has this really firm shaping within the bust to create that 1950s pointed shape so you can see that with the stiffening beneath these cups do actually stand up and form rather a good shape on their own and if we look at the back of the dress then we can see that there's actually wiring around those cups as well so there's the combination of wired and stiffened cups and with the very wide neckline and the belted waist and the natural waist area that is going to create an hourglass shape i'm going to try this dress on and i can't get the zip over my waist the problem i was mentioning earlier so here i am squeezing myself you can see i thought i'd show you a close-up so that well one you don't have to see bulging flesh <laughs> side but you can also see what a tight fit to put it mildly that waist cinch is and what a difference it makes to my waist area you can see in the middle how it's pulling me in and now to see if that zip will do up and yes with the waist cinch, cinch it does do only just however you can see that here I am squeezed into it at the waist area and how it gives me a kind of midge maisel hourglass figure that I don't actually have. This is a true vintage 1950s evening dress and it has all the qualities that a midge maisel dress would have that wide scooping neckline that makes your shoulders and like your whole top half look wider the belted waist which makes your waist look nipped in and creates that hourglass look plus the shaped skirt held away from your hips and kind of flaring down so it really evoked the look of those 1950s film stars i mean the dress not myself and then just before I show you the shapewear, I wanted to show you the construction of this dress that I was wearing to introduce the video. And you can see how a flower petal like layered effect has been created by stitching tiers of the printed fabric onto a base skirt of just plain linen. The edges are finished with ribbon and the painterly fabric is so typical of the 50s and I just wanted to show you this cut creme underskirt and that really holds the skirt of the dress out when you walk and I'll just show you it on so that you can see the effects see back in the garden with my dog supervisor 
So I'm wearing a 50s bullet bra under the dress, but I'm not wearing a waist cincher or a petticoat. It's a slightly larger dress than the red velvet dress, but the shape, as apart from the bullet bra, because the bust area of this dress was not shaped, but the skirt, the shape is coming completely from the tiered effect over the stiff buckram skirt and I think the tears, the ribbon edged tears with the little ribbon at the back, very pretty but the hourglass shape also comes from the very wide scoop neck and the nipped in waist and that tiered full skirt and you can see how it creates that shape that again I promise you that sadly I don't truly have but it shows that anybody can have that wonderful 50s hourglass shape. So now to show you my vintage underwear or shapewear and this is a true vintage 1950s bullet bra and it has as you can see those concentric lines of stitching right along to the point of the bra and these often were called a whirlpool bra for obvious reasons and you can see how it's actually a very fine stretchy fabric there's no wires no boning in it it's not uncomfortable to wear and I think it's kind of a pretty bra actually and it just does that very simply at the back like that so the only issue that I would have with a bra is the problem filling it. <laughs> and actually, when I was looking at this bra and thinking of the inserts they wore, I did remember a friend of mine's mother telling me this like nightmare story of how she'd really fancied this boy in school when she was like 18 or something. And there'd been the school dance and she'd gone along in a bra she'd used some kind of inflatable inserts i'm just showing you the modern vintage style inserts that i bought from what katie did anyway her inflatable insults this it all went rather well with this chap and they went to do you know the kind of slow dance close together and she leant up towards him and her inflatable inserts just suddenly deflated and I <laughs> I researched this when I was making this video and it actually turned out to be true there were inflatable inserts that were prone to suddenly deflating under pressure something she'd obviously never forgotten even after 20 years of being married to someone else anyway this is a girdle from the early 1960s and you can see it has this rather pretty panel of daisies which are laced up and although when I first started looking at and wearing girdles I thought the lacing looked a bit of a pain I actually have come round to the idea to showing you that the sides have that little bit of stretch it's a bit stained because it has been around for decades this girdle but yes I've one round to lacing because it obviously means that you can let it in and out I'm also showing you that the girdle has this boning as well and actually underneath the lacing is a very firm stretch fabric with hooks and eyes so it does actually have two layers over the tummy area and suspenders of course because in that time they always wore stockings and you can also see it's cut quite high up on the legs so that it didn't rub into the thighs all in all quite a pretty little girdle i think and not uncomfortable to wear so i would if you're going to wear a girdle recommend these ones from the early 60s now an alternative is this modern vintage inspired one from what katie did this girdle is made up of stretch fabric because of course stretchy lycra fabric has come a long way since the 1950s otherwise the two girls are not that different because underneath that lacing on the original vintage girdle there is also a panel with 
hook and eyes down the front. Both these girdles are not uncomfortable. If anything, the True Vintage one is slightly more comfortable because the elastic waist and notice a theme here of the what Katie did girdle does actually dig in a little and as we're on the subject of digging in here is the very effective agony waist cincher and yes yes it does look small doesn't it yes it is actually the one recommended for my size so as you can see it has this very firm stretch fabric and boning with hooks and eyes. It works terribly well if you can bear it. And just to show you what it looks like opened out, so of course it's designed to flare a little at your hips and just to cinch in that waist area and you're just pointing out all those boning channels and the stretch mesh. And that over everything one would of course wear a tailored slip so I'm just showing you this is a true vintage 1950s one and it has a zip because it's designed to fit closely to you, your body. So with a slip one just needed the last thing was a petticoat and I have decided to starch my petticoat that I made last week in the traditional way. So with my laundry starch dissolved in boiling water I add my damp petticoat and then just leave it for a few seconds before I took it out into the garden to let it dry naturally before ironing it and it made a big difference. So now to wear it all under the walkaway dress. So I wanted to start by showing you the walkaway dress with modern underwear beneath. So I'm not wearing any of that vintage shapewear. This is just modern underwear and as you can see the skirt still fans out a little bit if I twirl but ultimately it is quite a modern shape. The dog is directing me. So let's now put that vintage shapewear on and see the different effects. So I'm wearing my true 1950s girdle and my petticoat, my starched petticoat, the bullet bra and the waist cincher and I think the result is pretty dramatic. The bullet bra is creating that 1950s pointy bust. The waist cincher is nipping in my waist and you can see that I now appear to have that Mrs. Maisel hourglass figure. It's a real classic 1950s silhouette now. I look much more like the walkaway dress on the pattern envelope. And it's such a feminine Mrs. Maisel or <laughs> Disney princess look. What would I wear every day? The starch petticoat is obviously totally comfortable, as is the bullet bra. I might wear the girdle for a special occasion where I wasn't eating. The waist cincher, I would probably only wear for photo shoots with true vintage dresses, as I would always sew dresses to accommodate a more comfortable <laughs> waistline. So let's have a quick look at what the walkaway dress looked like both before and then after my shapewear. I do hope you'll like this video and consider subscribing. Bye for now.